Hi kids, welcome back to GraviCalc, where each week we build a new digital logic circuit using Gravitrax marble runs. We're doing this to find out how computers and other electronics work on the inside. This is our fourth lesson in the series, and today we're going to build the NOR and NAND gates. If you haven't watched the first three lessons, you're going to want to watch them first so you can understand the terminology we'll be using today. In case you're new to my channel, I'm the Masked Marble, and my videos are about all things Gravitrax. I'm also the Lone Ranger of the Marble World. I lost my horse, so let me know if you find him. He's white, answers to high yo silver, and eats parsley and apples. We've been learning the seven simple logic gates. This week we will build gates five and six. Do you remember the names of the gates? And, or, XOR, not. NAND, NOR, XNOR. Again, AND, OR, XOR, NOT. NAND, NOR, XNOR. You may have noticed something about the gate names. The first three are AND, OR, and XOR. And then we have the NOT gate, which inverts a signal, turning a 0 to a 1 and a 1 to a 0. Now look at the names of the last three gates and compare them to the first three gates. Do you notice anything? The names NAND, NOR, and XNOR are the same as the first three gates, but with the letter N added. Do you know what the N stands for? It stands for NOT. The NAND gate is an AND gate combined with a NOT gate. The NOT gate is placed after the AND gate. The NOR gate is an OR gate followed by a NOT gate. And the XNOR gate is an XOR gate followed by a NOT gate. So since we've already built the NOT, AND, OR, and XOR gates, we've actually already built the other three gates, but only in sections and not in whole. Before we continue, pause the video and build this week's Gravicalc marble circuit using the app code shown. This week's track can be built from a single starter kit. No expansions are needed. The free Ravensburger Gravitrax app will give you step-by-step -step build instructions. Just switch the app from construction mode to manual mode. If you don't own a Gravitrax set, you can participate anyway by running the track simulation in the app. Though the app will place a marble in each slot, you can simulate a zero in an input slot by temporarily deleting a piece of track to prevent that marble from reaching its destination. When you build the track, make sure all switches are in the correct starting position or you won't get a correct result. And after running a track, you'll need to reset those switches back to their starting position before you run the track again. Say, did you know that each logic gate has its own picture or symbol? These symbols can be used to draw logic diagrams on paper. No, these aren't symbols that you use in music. It's symbol, S-Y-M-B-O-L. Here are the symbols for the gates. For all these symbols, the inputs are the lines extending from the left side of the symbol, and the output is the line extending from the right side of each symbol. Note that the gates each have two inputs on the left and one output on the right, but the NOT gate has only one input on the left and one output on the right. Also, take a closer look at the NOT gate. Do you see that little circle on the right side? That's the part of the symbol that stands for NOT. So if you add that little circle to the right side of an OR gate symbol, then you get the symbol for the NOR gate. If you add the circle to an AND gate symbol, then you get the symbol for the NAND gate. And if you add it to an XOR gate symbol, that makes the symbol for the XNOR gate. So even in the symbol, you can see that the NOR gate is simply an OR gate with the NOT gate added to the output. And the NAND gate is an AND gate with the NOT gate added, and so on. We've been using logic tables to describe the behavior of logic gates. I'm going to walk you through the logic table for the NOR gate and then for the NAND gate, you're going to generate the logic table yourself. 
The logic table for the OR gate looked like this. We imagined our mom had said we can have a cookie if we swept the floor or washed the dishes. That meant we could have a cookie if we swept the floor or washed the dishes or both. But we wouldn't get a cookie if we did neither chore. So the four rows of the OR gates logic table are 101, 011, 111, and 000. Now I want you to focus on the output column with the four outputs of 1, 1, 1, and 0. What would happen if we took those four outputs of 1, 1, 1, and 0 and put them through a NOT gate? What would a NOT gate do to those values? Well, you remember that a NOT gate inverts, so it turns a 1 into a 0 and a 0 into a 1. So a NOT gate would turn the 1, 1, 1, 0 into 0, 0, 0, 1. And this would be the output of an OR gate combined with a NOT gate, OR plus NOT. We might call that a NOT OR gate or a NOR gate. So the logic table tells us that a NOR gate gives a value of 0 if either input is 1 or if both inputs are 1. And a NOR gate gives a value of 1 if both inputs are 0. Before we run our NOR gate circuit, let's look at something unique that we're doing with the marble launcher. Just like with the NOT gate, we need to have a clock marble in the circuit. What is a clock marble? It's a marble that is necessary to cycle the logic gate through its calculations. I'm calling it a clock marble because in real computers and other electronics, an electric clock signal is what makes the input signals move through the logic gates from input to output. It's kind of like an inchworm that moves forward one step by scrunching up and then stretching out. A clock signal in a computer moves the circuit forward by scrunching up to one and then stretching out to zero. It does this over and over. This up and down clock signal controls when the next set of inputs is fed to the logic circuit. In the case of our Gravicalc NOR circuit, we need to use this clock signal to start a timer within the circuit. This timer gives us a way to send a 1 to the output even if there is no marble in the inputs. We've set up the timer in our NOR gate circuit also to give the OR part of the circuit enough time to complete its calculation first. Then the clock marble comes by and checks the result of the calculation performs the NOT part of the calculation, and puts the result in the output. So our Gravicalc NOR circuit performs the first half of the calculation first, which is the OR part of the circuit. It stores that result in the position of the second switch by repositioning the switch if necessary. Then the circuit finishes up the second half of the calculation, which is the NOT part of the circuit. The clock marble comes by after the OR part of the circuit is complete and uses the position of the second switch to perform the NOT calculation. So together, the OR and NOT calculations combine to make a NOR gate. And so we are going to use the front two slots in the marble launcher as our two inputs. Remember, we call the left slot input A and the right slot input B, and we're going to use the back slot that will be our clock marble. We must always have a marble in the back slot, even if there are no marbles in the front slots. Now let's run our NOR gate circuit. We're going to run all four combinations of inputs and verify the results in the four rows of our logic table. First, let's set up the track with a marble in input A and no marble in input B. Now let's run the track. What is the output? There is no marble in the output slot, so the output is zero. Now set input A as zero and input B as one and run the track.
Okay, what result did you get? Again, the output is zero. Next, set both input A and input B to one and run the track again. Again, the output is zero. Lastly, run the track with no marble in either input. What do you think is going to happen? Well, because of the not part of the North circuit, we will end up with a marble in the output. The output is one. So we have verified the logic table for the NOR gate. And now let's run our NAND gate circuit. To change the track to a NAND gate, toggle the starting position of the first switch. Just like when we changed the OR gate to the AND gate in lesson two, the first switch will now require both inputs to be true or one before sending a one to the output. I'm going to have you generate the logic table for the NAND gate. Just like in the previous lesson, you're going to run the track and you're going to fill in the results in the table. You can either print out a blank table from the link in the description, or just get a blank piece of paper, make four rows and three columns. Above the first column, write input A. Above the second column, write input B. Above the third column, write output. We're going to run all four combinations of inputs for our NAND gate. So first, set up the track with a marble in input A and no marble in input B. Now let's run the track. What is the output? There is a marble in the output slot, so the output is one. Now set input A as zero and input B as one and run the track again. Okay, what result did you get? Again, the output is one. Next, set both input A and input B to one and run the track. Now the output is zero. And last, run the track with no marble in either input. Now the output is one. Does your logic table for the NAND gate look like this? If so, great job. So hooray. Today you learned how a NOR gate and a NAND gate work and built your own logic table for the NAND gate. We've now built six of the seven basic logic gates. Next week, we build the XNOR gate, which combines a NOT gate with the XOR gate. Then the following week, we'll learn how computers actually count numbers using only ones and zeros. After that, we're going to start building some adders that can actually add numbers. Okay, see you next week.